The advantage is Talon does have overall last pick, so that is slightly in favor if they want to hold out for 23 Savages carry. I don't think so. I think he sees this lane. You should KP's probably, so much as I hate to see it, like, going to... It makes sense that he gets to see the carry, so he gets to pick the offlaner last, whereas Savage sees the offlaner, so he should pick the carry okay. type of situation here. But that is going to put KP in a situation where to get the most use out of the last pick, he probably is going to have to play something niche like, you know, we talked about before, maybe the Slardar again, and not that, okay. like, broader spectrum type of hero that just has team fight. And honestly, I, I have no idea what Savage is going to pick here. It's pretty Fanatic difficult to, like, to understand. And it looks like KP has decided he's going to be playing Death Prophet, I imagined? Probably. Yeah, so them picking Rubik here is their Enigma answer. And that just means that Savage, he already knows his lane matchup. They're going to ban two heroes. Fnatic's going to answer the question for me of, like, what are the best heroes that 23 Savage could play against his Enigma? <laughs> and Jab's like, I don't want to play against these two heroes, and he's going to have them banned right now. Last time we saw Enigma into Rubik, the Enigma cast Black Hole once. That's how it goes. In the entire game, it was... Yeah. One of the worst Enigma performances I've ever seen in my entire he life. He held it and held it and, and held it. And <laughs> held it and held it and held it. I don't even remember. And then it was like 45 minutes. We're like, oh, there it is. <laughs> I yeah. mean, I play a lot of Enigma. When I play versus Rubik, I just black hole the Rubik. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> it's better than just not but using it at all. He did do that at the very yeah. end of the game. And they didn't even kill the Rubik. And he stole the black hole afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what can you do? If you wait too yeah. long, that'll happen. It was Polaris. Sometimes I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Polaris. I think it was Force playing I'm sorry for us, but Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like in that game, you know, maybe it can be applied to this game, but like they just need to play it well on vision uh, because, you know, like the fear of black holing into Rubik comes from when you can't Ten see him and stuff. Remaining. So if they're able to just abuse vision and pick him off, that would be Five great. I'd s Night Stalker's ban, which is kind of, I mean, they have an off player. Actually, uh, what kind of heroes give Vision? Like Monkey King and Night Stalker are like my favorites for giving Vision and Beastmaster, but all three are banned. Versus, uh, who's picking an off laner? No one. I'm just talking uh, about it. Oh, Clockwork. <laughs> oh, Clock's great. Yeah, but they have the supports unless they want to put Marcy on for like I want to see Fnatic. I mean, Lycan. Show Vision. Summon units. Give Vision. Fanatic. Yeah, that'd be good too. Zeus. <laughs> <laughs> that was sexy. I mean, they need to carry. Yeah, they banned uh, the no Viper, which is incredibly strange ban to <laughs> see. Are they trying to pick Bristleback carry? Uh, I'm down. Uh, Even to a DP, I'm down. I mean, the Alchemist <laughs> makes some sense. The Acid Spray is pretty good for Sidal, and so you can just put it down, and Enigma can't enter there. Yeah. I have no idea why they banned Viper. That makes no sense to me. I just really... Oh, I don't like that. Oh. that I mean, it's okay. It's pretty good. I just wanted something. I want something that goes in to to garner heroes to like attack them, so that Enigma can get his spells off, or like Puck can get his spells off. Like they want them to group, but no one on their team forces heroes to group right now. Well, so maybe TA could be that. Coil maybe will force them to group for the. Whole. I mean, yeah, but if they're not grouped <laughs> for the coil, then they can't get a grouped coil. I mean, it's undying. is just gonna have that job. He's just gonna yeah. walk in. Yeah, good luck to him. <laughs> He's going to die. Yeah. But all he has to do is get Tombstone off, and even then, maybe not, if they group up enough for the Black Hole. But if perhaps this Enigma doesn't even go for Black Hole. He just gets the <laughs> Rage Pact. Maybe just never spells it. Yeah. <laughs> just <laughs> <laughs> never skills it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Back skills in the good old days. everything else. Yeah. <laughs> Lena Carey. Or Lina. Tiny Carey. Mm. Tiny Carey. Okay, Tiny's Tiny. Carey. Lena's going mid. Mm-hmm. I mean, that one, I guess, was pretty obvious. I should have seen that with uh, Versus the Enigma. He can kill them. They also didn't have a Tombstone hitter, so that's pretty good. How did you not see that, you guys? I'm just <laughs> disappointed. Hopefully, when I bring in our Casters, Gods, and Cyclops, they can say, yeah, we definitely saw this. Did you see this one coming, Gods, at all? Of course. Mm. It's very easy yeah. to be Captain Hindsight over here. <laughs> Cyclops, is, Cyclops is called every pick. Oh. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you guys are yeah. just uh, too big brain over here. But uh, Zyclops, any any info you want to impart uh, on us about these lineups? Maybe a team that you prefer a little bit more? Yeah, uh, definitely. I, I think that Talon drive it a little bit better.
better with the with the heroes that are quite easy to execute, just like um, um, Fear say just now that the uh, hero is quite straightforward. Dead Prophet, Child of Charm, all you have to do is just grouping up and, and just trying to push. Plus, they have the Rubik. That is going to cause a concern um, to Enigma for sure. <laughs> Hopefully, he could land the, the, the black hole directly to, to Rubik. <laughs> and um, uh, at the same time, I think Fnatic also got a wide open chance because the um, Armel Park. Mm -hmm. That's all. I did. This guy is actually one of, by, of the best I in the region. Yeah. So I can't wait to see this match. Yeah. Well, you know, Armel. He had a great performance in game one. Do you have more faith in him, or did the Lena have uh, enough of an impact sheet for you to to flip to Talon? Okay. Um, for Mikoto, Lena, yeah. right? I um, yeah. He, you agree? <laughs> he played this Lena like four <laughs> games in three months. And the win rate is 100%. He never All right, then lost it's free. You sold? It's you free sold? then, yeah. All right. I'm so sold. You convinced yeah. her. Absolutely. Um, but game at two is going to be underway. So, God, the Zyklops, please tell us some more about this game. <laughs> uh, ooh. I think this one is going to be a fun game, right? Uh, surely it's going to be a uh, battle right off the bat, right, Mr. God? I hope so. I think last game started a little, little slow, but and then it ramped up. Um, but it was felt like, you know, Fnatic were just getting free Roche after free Roche. This time around, it's it's Talon who have all the Roshan and Tower taking heroes. So I hope we're going to see a less passive uh, Talon here in game number two. Yep, yep, ladies and gentlemen, and we are in the game. DPC Southeast Asia Division 1, 2 or 3. Important match between Team Fnatic versus Talon in the base of three series. We are in game number two, and the score is Fnatic 1. Talon, Zero, you hear me, Cyclops and Gods. Welcome, everyone. Hello, hello. Thank you for welcoming me. Uh, <laughs> Welcome to you, too. Uh, yeah, to myself, too, hopefully. <laughs> Welcome to our observer, Aosin, Steven. Uh, yes. let's, have a, let's have a good oh. game, too. Oh, thank you, Steven. Oh, okay. Hey, so do you think this one is going to be passive, like last one? Um... 30 seconds to I, maybe a little on the fanatic side just because they're heroes but it, it all comes down to what armel wants to do well armel, armel and dj i mean we said, said last game we saw it armel and dj are like the two big tempo setters with the mid rotations and dj just being this you know very high skill super super talented four position player who can be greedy but he can also fight and gank and playing a marcy I'm always excited to see what Marcy can do. Yeah, yeah, first time adding into the competitive scene in the DPC 12-3. Come on, man. Show me what you got. Um, yep, it looks like it's going to be the trade. Everyone just spreading back to the lane. Seems to be a happy lane for all. Um, if there will be some first blood, of course there will be first blood. I think it's going to be on top lane. Have you ever seen the Dota game end? Zero kills to zero? Just only kill Come the buildings. Come on, man. Ignore the heroes. Really? <laughs> is it possible? <laughs> I think that is once. I, I, I believe I ever seen it on YouTube or Reddit sometimes. Okay. It's like the passive win. <laughs> yeah. Pacifist. Like you refuse to hurt heroes, but you will kill their buildings. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? Because we got the uh, DP and Child of Child Man in the game in the same team too. Put it all the way. Oh. Well to get things started. I, I'm curious to watch this bottom lane. Uh, I think once again, like similar to the last game, it's kind of the most interesting lane. A lot of aggression. We already see Shaman and Undying battling it out. Yeah. Um, one interesting thing about uh, this Undying is the uh, Fnatic seems to be the only team uh, to pick Undying in the DPC in the past couple of months. And it's actually got a pretty good win rate. Pick two games, win two games in a row. And uh, last time they, they, they used this hero is like five days ago in the previous match, and they won two. Okay. Well, we'll see if they can continue some of that undying success. They definitely, you know, part of the reasoning behind this Lena was maybe seeing that undying and winning that tombstone hitter. Yeah. Giving them that other they, hero that can address it. That game that ran undying with Marty, too. So it's, I guess they w maybe like the pace that these heroes play. It can be kind of fast mm. paced, very strong in the early to mid game. Mm. Oh. All right. 
And the one lane seems to be the place where action happens. Yeah, both teams have the supports blocking all the camps, so we yet to get, get any neutral spawning. This is just, I think, pretty standard laning for the most part. And then looking at some other lanes, I think both top and middle lane are kind of like the farm wars. Enigma in lane is usually a pretty defensive laner, which is where I'm, I'm not, like, I don't love the Marcy Enigma lane. I think they just liked Enigma for the game, but the end result is that DJ... He can't really be an aggressive Marcy because he's playing with Enigma. Um, and Enigma just wants to deny range creeps and farm the lane. So DJ is kind of a bit limited in what he can do this game. That is a very good point of view, yeah. I agree on that. I mean, yeah, it, it, it could be oh, mid lane. more dangerous. Oh, okay, middle lane. I don't think they've got the damage. Ah, mill. Ah, mill. Got brought very low there. Lena had a dragon slave, so Armel's out of bottle charges. He's going to have to bring out a salve. Makoto getting the better of this lane for now. Maybe we're going to have to see also a walk over to the bounty rune hmm. just to refill the bottle. But... And do you think the no talisman chains are actually affect a lot to, to the mid laners? Uh, it affects Storm. <laughs> That's yeah. really it. Top lane, <laughs> they go on are, jabs. Okay. Oh, hey, five for the first time. Avalanche on the top to like Kinesis. Ooh. Easy kill trade? from Body block. Oh, DJ. Ball. Okay, a trade. Can. Oh! Rebound! Yep. Oh! And Janual on the Undying goes down bottom. That's, you know, they're laying with a lot of aggression. But top lane, it started, yeah. yeah they, they went in on onto Talon, and Talon just kind of held their ground and kept fighting. Interesting. At the bottom lane, a Chackle on Templar Assassin. First attempt to go on Revan. Failed. Um, maybe not... not the perfect time yet. Yeah, we'll wait for it. But um, what they did great at the bottom lane for Team Thailand Esport is they harvest that level very good. Level 3 and now they're going to go in Spirit Siphon. Just trying to harass. Nothing much. Yep. I think what's uh, maybe most surprising about this mid lane for me isn't the mm. side lanes or the kills. This is mid lane. Makoto is winning this mid lane pretty handily against Armel. Ooh. 12 denies and 26 last hits to 15. So, very good performance from Makoto, who we've seen just absolutely dominate this DPC season in Talon's game so far. Yes. A crazy, crazy performance for him when he played on Lina. Four games in the past three months in all the uh, premium... Oh, wait, and bomb lane, Spirit Siphon connected. Raven. Um, better watch out that Hornwell, the uh, spamming his decay too. Yep. Yeah, I was about to say about the... The stats that he played four games, 100% win rate, never lose before when he played Lina. Uh, this might be the perfect game of Lina. Lina getting poked down now. This time around, Puck starting to, with these higher levels, get some good harass in. It's good to see people harassing or fighting more um, in the 7.31D because of the change of that self. It just, yeah. It's just perfect. Ooh. Oh, look at <laughs> Out of, out of the water. But here comes the gank. Oh, Marcy rebound. He just judo back and it got him. Mikoto. Yeah, Mikoto. he was playing so greedy. He was on such low health. I think knowing that the pup can't kill him alone, he was like, okay. oh, I'll just stay here and Action. then free kills. Oh, oh. He's a traded bomb lane as well. Yep. Oh my god. Now the game officially started. Ladies and gentlemen, are you guys <laughs> ready? Put your hands in the air because KP in the tree line. Spirit Siphon trying to find that Raven. He juke his way out. He's fine. Hands in the air, but make sure you know, buckle up, stay safe. Yes. This is a crazy <laughs> ride. Top lane, they're going in as well. 23 Savage in some trouble. Man, Marcy is everywhere. Top mid bottom. And right now, it's going to be crazy Savage. Throw him out into the creeps and finish it off by jabs. Yep. Marcy, Marcy, Marcy. Like you say, she's everywhere. The The lanes were very tough. They've got a 2k gold lead. They're out farming yeah. these lanes, but what Fnatic are going to have is this very active four position now. We already saw it ganking Makoto in the mid lane, and you need that mm -hmm. because of how well Makoto was doing, Ooh, particularly mid. Coming back in again. Sorry, Jackal. Yep. Uh, air the chalk, everything. Got an easy kill. KP trying to retreat. No, he's not trying to get more. <laughs> Raven fall, and that's a pretty big kill, man. Nice deny on the tombstone, but that's the carry kill. TA goes... This TA is not getting good farm at all. Death Prophet in the offlane has been such a key hero. Game one for jabs. And this time around, KP is dominating his lane. This has been, like I think, going back to 2 or 2. 
Death Prophet was one of his most played heroes, and he's just really good at that. Talon is so good at playing around KP's Death Prophet. There's so many things to concern when you play against Death Prophet. Oh, wait. Don't tell me you're gonna <laughs> lane, kill yep. all the tree and diving in like that. Rebound, bounce back, and swim the savage in the middle. He's still, he's supported the portal down, so he's gonna be fine. A little bit too greedy for team for nothing. It now become three v two situation. Throw it down, uh, but Jeff still looking pretty healthy, leaving Ooh. that DJ behind. But hey, reinforcement is here. Dropping a dream coin for the first time. Lock on two. Rubik gonna be the first one to fall. I'm gonna play slash it all out. DJ still alive, die because of the uh, that Rubik. Oh Armel's still goodness. hunting. Can he find 23 Savage? Doesn't look like it. But he's still nearby. Can he get the orb? It won't be enough damage by itself, but... Yeah, I think Armel ah, knows it. Was... Oh my god. It's... I just love it, you know. Each team just want to destroy uh, other, lanes, uh, other team's lane. And they uh, end up with a crazy fight right on the start. Eight minutes yep. in, we have like eight kills. One kill per minute. Ooh, yeah, we'll see if this keeps up. It really feels like it It probably does. Like, you haven't got, like, super greedy carries on either side. Like, TA is usually this, like, more tempo hero who wants to get involved in the mid game. She will get forced out of this bottom lane, and this may just be a free tier 1 tower. If they want to commit exorcism, they should be able to take this tower nice and fast. Man, I can't keep my eye off that Mercy. This is actually my first game I get to cast Mercy in competitive scene. And look at that, KP diving in, trying to find that Hornwell. John Well is right here. Team up with that high. John Well yeah. easily teleport away. Yeah, they really would love a siege wagon or something here to help this push, but they can also just maybe spam it out a little. Similarly in top lane, Fnatic just pushing faster. No exorcism, no problem. They have the Enigma. They're just using the Eidolons to push and... At this point, I think Talon have to make a decision to... Yeah, they're going to commit the exorcism. They don't have Serpent Ward, so it's really the only way to take this tower. Mm. Two mechanics for them to just take down any towers, mechanisms, and also the Mass Serpent Ward. This is going to be... Uh, this is going to cause a lot of problem to Team Fnatic, just like last game that they cost Team Talon. But I, I do believe they have... I mean, after the BKB of the Templar Assassin, they should be fine going into that. And Kodo finds a, a free support kill in the jungle, just had a haste rune, ran in, and used yeah. his spell combo. But it's not really a kill I think Fnatic are too worried about. They've got priorities elsewhere, which is to get some farm. They are going to TP Marcy towards mid, so maybe looking for a gank onto Makoto oh. here. <laughs> All right. Hey, watch out. Re uh, 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 rebound and bounce it back! Nice throw, Mikola dropping quite low, he follow up his many stick, but just not enough! His teleport, his team teleported down, a shackle on a puck, and Spirit Siphon connected, and, but it would be hard to take down that army. Yeah. They just don't have the damage for it. 23 Savage, oh, he's getting low, on. they have a black hole here! Oh my god, that DJ Marcy playing like super risky with a low HP, trying to get in to the mid-tier to tower and just drag it out. Oh, that, that's Dyer's crazy, bro. Just play attack. some observer water and stop this Marcy. <laughs> yeah, she's just everywhere and just constantly fighting. It, it's crazy because Fnatic are the ones who didn't do as well in the lanes, but they're just looking to yeah. scrap and brawl and take whatever fight they can find. Talon mm. just seem a little unprepared for this kind of level of aggression even though they're you know up a couple of kills they're kind of on the back foot and whenever Fnatic run at them they're just reeling like they're like we gotta get out hey but if you take a look at the network the top three networks are from the Talon's core so my yeah. question is when it goes to like a super late game let's say like 40 minutes game who do you believe stronger when it come to cause um that's a good question um I think both teams have things that can scale late game. I would mm -hmm. give, like, uh, and I always see Enigma core and, like, think late game is going to favor them, but playing into the Rubik, I think I give T Talon a bit of an edge. I think the Lena yeah. and Tiny both just Ooh, scale yeah. really well. I think particularly we've seen what Lena can do, and against this lineup, it feels like a really good game for a Lena to kind of carry and scale. All right. They come oh. once again, three men smoking in, trying to find the target at the bottom lane. Who's going to be the lucky man? It's going to be 23 Savage, dropping a dream coin, silence him already, rebound, everything, this pause, got him back. Oh, 23 Savage, but he's still, oh, he's quite tanky, isn't he? 
Oh, okay. It looks like they spent too much for Swifty Savage. So Soul it, Black it seems to be a one one two trade. Black they Hole? Retrain. Black Hole for the first time in this one. Two stuck in there. Everything like Swagger and also Laguna Blade. Four down for Team Fanatic. Oh, some regrets there for poor Jabs. He went for a Black Hole and I think he sold a Rubik coming. He's like, stop, I can't Black Hole. <laughs> Meanwhile, mid lane running in, exorcism. They want to get the kill on Raven, but KP hasn't got the damage. But yeah, the Rubik, the hero of that fight with the stolen black hole, lands a perfect two hero black hole as well. And with that extra cast range from the Arcane Supremacy, just helping him really turn the tides of that fight. That's crazy, man. That stolen black hole from Rubik. Ooh. All right. First 10 kills belongs to Team Talon Esports. Yep. Look out for 4k ahead in only 12 minutes in seems to be a great start maybe it's time to wake up for team talent esports uh that should help 20 savage seems good yeah they do seem to be on point here oh coil in the trees he finds hide on the shaman i think so no TP yeah. out for you. Everything on him. Yeah. No. I will go get down that ward. Yeah. But I think they might deward that. They should have a pretty good idea that. Oh, mm. the sentry misses, so they're not going to get the deward. Talking about the Mikoto and Ame or fighting each other a bit. Um, well, if you watch, uh, I mean, uh, in my opinion, I think they are too kind. Two different play style, Mikoto and Armel. Mikoto will be more. Oh wait, look at that. Will be more, more active than Armel a bit. But Armel will be like, uh, he need a proper item, and then after that, he just man can't stop him. Yeah. Just like a Terminator. Yeah, we'll see if Armel gets to have a similar game on his puck as we saw last game on Mars, where it just felt like he was everywhere, landing every single yeah. spell, controlling every team fight. Puck, a different kind of beast in a team fight has to be a bit more slippery and can't just go jumping in. Yes. You have to utilize your elusiveness to really full effect. Yeah. I mean, that, I, I really admire the, the guy who played great Puck. It, it's really fun to watch. Yeah. Well, but, um, in SCA, there, there's against. many of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, if you don't uh, play the Puck, you start <laughs> canceling your face shifts, wondering when to push certain buttons. Uh, I mean, there, there are some times I play in um, in my own rank, and I feel like this this path is not at my level for sure. I mean, it's it's so fast and all the stuff. I can't even touch him. Yeah. Let's take a look on this one. Armel into it. DJ gonna lead there the charge go. with all the smoke in. John Well and Armel's behind. Get in. Found the call. It's gonna be KP. Dispose him back. Vanning Rift. I didn't even drop a dream coin. And clean spree ended. Yeah, they TP'd in as if they wanted to turn it, but it was just a Rubik with Shaman nearby, so the two supports would just be food to these Fnatic heroes, so they decide not to try and engage and do anything to help out Death Prophet. Particularly because elsewhere you've got, you know, 23 Savage is farming. He's got his Blink Dagger now, so Blink Echo Saber, which means Tiny can get involved. Into Roshan, can they get here in time to contest this one? Not sure they're killing this fast enough, particularly with the illusion coming into... Oh, doesn't quite scout out. Oh. Roach getting very low. Oh, they've got okay. it. Okay. That's, that's gonna, but they still commit anyway. Start with the avalanche and the toss, and they kill Donwell real fast. At least they've got a support back after the Roachan loss. Yeah. Just the freebie kill. Like, okay. Yeah. I see a support. That's, you know, you're a tiny with a blink echo saber. That's a, that's a free kill a lot of the time when you're even, mm. you know, a strength support like an undying. Kill. I think he, the Rubik play from play from now on is going to change the way the game is. Behold. Positioning is Radiant's the key, tower is and now they got into the Radiant NC. Playing uh, well, considering quite aggressive after the enemy team just got the edges, instead of you know go back playing passive, farm in lane, get a key item, they just push smoke, try to. Yep. Yeah, get a queue up. And even, yeah, it was Radiant who took it Aegis, but it's Talon who are pressuring and looking to take this mid-tier one tower. 
Looks like uh, they'll get it with the Lina. Makoto just able to stand in the front lines with this newly bought BKB. Makoto's Lina oh, is a problem at bottom. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, oh, it's, it's just... I, yeah, I, I still kill. remember Chief Six saying that the uh, Puck is so good at dying at tiny Rubik combo, have a launch and a toss. Yeah. And it's, like, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think Amel need to, to worry about uh, where that tiny is. So, oh, wait. One guy about to get caught, a tackle on Master Pin Wards. I kind of like that one that high, didn't even hesitate to just drop his Master Pin Wards, yeah. even just for one kill. Just play it safe, take the kill, get yeah. out. Yeah. They're not done, they may get some more kills. Tiny's on the hunt and finding CJ. Oh. It's going to be another kill going the way of Talon. Hey. They're just, they're feasting so far. 14 kills yeah. in 17 minutes. Interesting. So now the game seems to be slowed down. Okay, uh, in the past five minutes, even though they get the edges, but uh, I think Talon is quite ahead on this. More fuel for my fire. Yeah, Talon is uh, the ones definitely controlling everything so far, just getting really good aggressive vision up there. Still looking, hunting for more kills, but. DJ's gone in mid. They get KP, okay, but he's going to BKB. BKB. Boy, everyone that has the BKB is turning it on. And Bikoto joining the team five on the right hand side of the map. It's KP going in first. His BKB gone down, but he's still in the front line with his Spirit Siphon. He's just going to throw himself he's in, dying. absorb everything, but he's being thrown in by the Amasi. Sonic Trap slow on everyone. Looks like that's no DP. Everyone of Team Talon just want to retreat or get into the safer place. John Well. Turn on his ultimate and trying to chase everyone down. In the end, it seems to be a trade. A good trade for Team Fnatic, but the fight is just not done yet. Kill jumped away. Okay, they are now chasing for Lina, but Mikoto is too fast. Yeah, does Mikoto want to go back in with a Shadow Blade? Be tricky with how grouped up Fnatic are, and just really good discipline from Fnatic there. Waiting until the Death Prophet was out of position, then just chucking her in, yeah. using that Dispose. Unfortunately for them, they lost the puck before the fight even really began. Just off to the side, it was a Shaman-Lina combo. And it's just such a tough matchup for Puck to play into. Rubik, Telekinesis, Instant Disable. Shaman has two Instant Disables almost. You've got Tiny. Even Lina, like, with all her burst damage and stuns. Like, there's a de every hero has a stun or a silence, and it's a tough Puck game. That's true. That's true. Really tough. Puck. Uh, he still managed to like kill four, die three, and not bad, and uh, get some items up. Uh, bling, portrait, which blade. Uh, this is the basic items, and and gonna help him survive for the next five minutes. But after this, it's quite interesting. What's he gonna pick up? Yeah, the the Lincolns is the defensive item that sometimes you just have to go as a puck, and I imagine he'll finish that one out. That since it's queued up. Do you think, uh, do you still believe in Lincolns? Um, yeah, even after that, I think the item wasn't changed. Like, the cooldown yeah. increase, it's it's still, to me, more similar item, you know? It's it's like <laughs> yeah. BKB. Like, yeah, BKB is changed, and it, it, the game is different with the BKB long cooldown, but it's still BKB. It still does the job uh, that you buy it for, and you you're still want, in games where you need it, you still buy it. Yeah. Play some massive pin wards on the bottom lane. It looks like DJ is going to teleport down to the bottom. Everyone teleport down to the bottom to the bottom tier three tower. Grouping up first and gonna charge in. But uh, I think it's too late to defend the bottom tier two. This is what's good to have the uh, massive pin wards on your team. Hey, wait, why? It's a little bit of a panic. I think he thought that Fnatic were about to engage and they were coming. They wanted to defend, but. Makoto missed red, and now Hyde is definitely Ooh, dead on the shaman. Cool. Another throw, but it rebounded away. Nice yeah. setup by Marcy, DJ, down to the river, and they got the support. Hyde falls. Yeah, cool guys, don't look at explosion. Puck's already walking to mid lane before the kill even completes, and... That's cool. Yeah. Fnatic, who are, you know, playing slightly from behind. They obviously don't maybe know the current net worth state. Mid lane, they've gone again, gonna force out a BKB from KP. Talon just playing a little bit wow. scared, it feels like, with some of the BKB usage. Mm, mm, yes, true. Is he yeah, I here? think so. 
they, they, they used the BKB here and then, and it, it seems like the, uh, that Marcy by DJ is messing with their mic games a lot. Yeah. It's so and fast. It, it feels like some of the game one issues are carrying over. Like, this game's a much better position for Talon, but that sense of, like, uh, like that unwillingness to go out and make plays, uh, um, you know, playing very timid compared to what we normally see out of talent. It just feels like they aren't playing with any kind of sense of urgency or any kind of sense of, hey, we need to go and make plays. It looks like they are grouping up both sides. Whole team smoke for Team Fnatic and as well as Team Talon Esport. This might be the first time 5v5. Let's take a look at 22 minutes in. Whoever wins its big team fight is going to affect the momentum for sure. Grouping up and trying to go in first. It seems like DJ is going to be the first one who jumped in. But after all these hype, they can't fight each other. Yeah, DJ with this Philosopher's Stone is going to allow him to get this Aether mm. Lens up really fast. And that just changes your game so much as a Marcy. Getting that extra cast range, more than doubling your disposed cast range, just makes it so much easier to initiate. So under pressure. I can feel the pressure on both sides. Yeah. Especially from Talon Esports. It, it, it feels like they, they're questioning everything. Every single action of every single player in that team. Hmm. Yeah, they're down again. This is it. This, you know, not do or die in terms of their entire season, but as far as this best of three goes, they've got to find a way to pull out this win. They've set up both Makoto as well as 23 Savage, I feel, to have a pretty good late game here on the Tiny and Lena. They just have to make sure they maintain, like, good map vision and make sure they're not getting jumped and picked off and caught out of position Dyer's because playing against Marcy, mistakes attack. get punished so easily and so heavily. Once minor position mistakes suddenly becomes an yeah. instant pickoff. Especially when you play against EJ, who is so crisp when it's come to the Radiant's initiation. Oh, oh, Trinity Savage picking there the body room, but he might have to pay with his life there. Turn the BKB, he seems so ready. He waits for support. Era 4 4 of support never come because he's stuck from behind. Stuck in the dream coil. What a play by Armel. And they kill a player in the front line, but at the end, it's only one casualty. I got the second. They got Lena with the black hole. Oh, Jabs okay. just, he just throws out a solo black hole. That's great. Oh. You can't black hole easily against Rubik, so if you find a carry, and I say carry like Tiny and Lena, kind of the two carries, you just solo black hole them if Rubik is not there. Puck did such a good job. You mentioned Armel. He zoned out everyone. He ignored the Tiny yeah. and jumped the back line. It's got the supports. I, I was like, I, I see I see 20 Savage fighting in the front line. It's like, hey, where's the rest? And in the end, he become 23, uh, 23 sandwiched. <laughs> well... At least for his game, he doesn't die there. It's But the Lena going down is just as bad, yeah. really. They want to go in and All fight right. again. They're going to go for a game. The Spirit Siphon, everything on John Well. Doing a pretty good job as a pod, though. I mean, he tanks a lot of the damage. Uh, setting up the Midnight Pulse, everything. For the fight, for the battlefields. Oh, are you getting stabbed from the lower ground? Pretty Savage almost goes down. He died eventually. Amel finish him off. And he is not gonna done yet. Dropping a dream coin on Zombies. the on the puck as well. He's gonna come back and finish the job. He let that uh, rabbit finish the job. Look at that. Oh, he enough. almost got away. Yeah, he he stole the refraction. And now here we go. Another one gonna be a date profit double kill for our male. They get four kills out of that, including yeah, tiny as well as death profit. Two of the cores. So absolute dream fight for Fnatic who are going to walk back and find themselves a potential Roshan now. They just absolutely obliterate. It felt like a very, like, domino snowball kind of fight where Talon just didn't really make a group effort to kind of engage and take that fight. They, I think they knew they wanted to try and force a fight there with some spells like Black Hole and Cooldown, but they kind of trickled in too much one by one. They start the fight with just two or three. They had some damage issues, and Fnatic do a great job punishing. Yeah, um, in my opinion, I think that um, standing position get messed around by that Park and also Marcy. Uh, next thing I see is everyone are just, you know, spreading out uh, in a star formations, you know, like five star at the star. <laughs> and they, the other one is on another corner uh, where they're supposed to just stick together and then they keep dying one by one. 
Oh, what a fast heroes uh, to deal with for Team Fnatic. Got a Marcy and also the um, the um, Templar Assassin and also the Puck. Yes. Formation is the key. Oh. Their item formation is really starting to pick up too. Raven's almost got a Scotty now on TA. Not the most conventional of items, but I feel like this is going to work wonders against Tiny. Just kiting him a little bit more. Getting rid of some of that regen as well. So, uh, look forward to seeing how Scotty TA really comes into play this game. But still, got a chance. I think I think if they can, you know, have a proper fight on this one, they're getting gone on first. They're being forced to just go on the BKB from Mikoto. He can't find a perfect spot to just deal the damage. Just send in KP in the middle of team fight. He can hold, but not for so long. Look at the damage comes up from Raven. Ooh, Raven. Man, 17 to 16 games for 5k ahead. Fnatic rolling in. Just all the momentum now. They're just ready to fight. They get themselves an Aegis and they're just happy to try and snowball the game off of this. Just doesn't feel like Talon have any answer at this point. There's a reason, I, you know, I think we saw less and less of this carry Tiny and we're seeing some of the weaknesses of the hero being exposed here. It's going to feel like a lot of pressure perhaps on Makoto's shoulders this game on the Lina to have a big impact. He's already done well on Lina, but he needs to just keep doing more. Oh, that's a ball. <laughs> <laughs> Got him for the light. Oh, okay. Rubik not gonna make it. Hey, ooh, ooh. interesting. Fraction blink. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's over. Okay. Dying this is not looking good. Dying in front of the mid tier to tower. You can lose the uh, mid. Oh, wait. At the bottom lane. Yeah, turn the BKB and get away from the dream coil. But I, I have the feeling that the uh, the area of Team Thailand is not being shut down completely. Dyer's Look at all the other awards uh, of Team Dyer's Fnatic that played so aggressively fall. deep in. Yeah, and it just feels like Talon can't leave their base anytime they poke their nose out. Whoa, speaking of poking your noses out, DJ, <laughs> he just went in semi high ground by himself a bit there. Not sure yeah. what was on his yeah, mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Talon just need a little bit more on this, you know, like the unforced error made by the uh, Fnatic. Still can't come back. Um, when it comes to team fight, who is the prime target for Team Talon Esports, in your opinion? Um, pro I was going to say maybe the Puck, but he's so elusive and with the Lincoln yeah. Sphere now, I just don't know if he can kill him. Um, probably has to be Enigma. I think if you don't address the Enigma, you're just going to die to this black hole. Like, sure, you've got a Rubik and can try and steal it, but uh, Enigma has BKB Blink now, so you can just get that Blink black hole on whether it's Lino or Tiny, and even if Rubik's able to steal it, it just feels like, you know, you're not going to have the best answers to to the team fight because of how far and Fnatic have gotten. It's also, you got to deal with all the Dispose, Rebound, Sidekick. Oh... This is the first time that I see a full potential of Marcy in the competitive scene. Oh. She deserves a spot from now on. Alright. So high ground we go, toss back. Top tier 3 tower, avalanche and toss back inside. Can they finish that one off? Holding on to the edges, he will be back full HP. But the rest, oh! Stuck it in! BKB and the black hole on two! Can they copy Passerino and use the black hole back? But no, no Rubik. Oh, it's a trade, a three double team talent East for Fnatic breakthrough, going in and trying to get that Lina right in front of the fountain. Oh my dear lord, it's a mission to prove who is the best male in the world. Hot male, D male, Su male, or R male. DD has been called, and it's Fnatic sweeping Talon 2 0. Oh boy, there's your answer. It's. it's absolute dominance 31 minutes it felt like it was quicker than that considering like game one Fnatic got off to an early lead and then snowballed it off of Roshan's and objectives this game it was a different story like Talon won the lanes they were up 2k gold coming out of the lanes and Fnatic just once they got like the team fights going and started making some plays and making those moves around the map it just it just felt like they knew exactly what they were doing and where they needed to be they were yeah. just finding constant pickoffs <clears throat> using the Marcy and RML again. What a series from this man. His puck, uh, as well as his <laughs> Mars, was just amazing.
Yeah, amazing. Do, do you know that in in the past records in the DPC 12-3, um, both sides in every match, they, they end the best of three with three games. This is actually the first time they end with two games and on Fnatic victory with a clean shot. Still, the chance of going to Major is still wide open for Talon Esports, but um, uh, just like you said just now, there are many things to be improved on, on this one. And um, congratulations to Team Fnatic, that is just great. Yeah, yeah. I, I think Fnatic at this point are uh, looking like the strongest team in the SEA region. They won the last tour, even though, you know, there's a lot of hype around Boom. It feels like Boom haven't been able to find that same form. But this Fnatic, I think particularly today, like week one, week two Fnatic, you know, they were going three games. This Fnatic here, the way they dominated one of the, you know, perhaps top teams in the region was so convincing that yes. I don't think there's any doubt that Fnatic is going to be going to the major anymore. Wow. Yep, that's it, that's it, guy, for the series. What a performance for, for both sides. Uh, even though Team Talon lost his series, but they have shown uh, their performance as well, and it was impressive. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in, but we're not done yet. Let's go back to the panel. Fnatic proved that today they were going to turn up and absolutely decimate. Talon. I mean, I'm just not even going to sugarcoat at this point. Fnatic mm. looked fantastic. This isn't the Talon that we're kind of used to. Talon have been looking great over the past two weeks of this DPC, but Fnatic definitely outlined and highlighted, showed that there are a lot of weak points that they could take advantage of, but on top of that, that they're constantly improving. This Fnatic was just... Impeccable. I don't know if there's enough like words in my vocabulary to keep <laughs> talking up how delectable, delectable as gods would definitely <laughs> say. Gameplay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they had that focus on that team fight again. I know you, you kind of might feel like a bit of a ro broken record at this point, fear, but I do want you to break down that uh th these team fights and sort of why they went so in favor of Fnatic despite Talon uh, doing well in the early phase. Well, the one good team fight we just saw that Talon had, so we'll give him a little bit of okay. credit here. Was <laughs> Jabs ended up black holing pretty much nothing there, and then they got their team fight spell on the Rubik, the black hole. They still mm -hmm. got the two man black hole, but without getting that black hole steal, Talon doesn't have much team fight to play with. And you can also see in this highlight reel, they can't deal with this tombstone on the high ground. They got the coil locking heroes down too, and on top of that, the black hole threat. And you're just so single target unless it's Rubik. This is an amazing spell steal. They just felt really pressured, even though the lanes went well for them. They just could not find the opportunity to take the team fights in either of these games, and Fnatic just kind of like, you know, bulldozed their way through this game. Mm -hmm. Do you feel cheap? There was a bit of an issue, maybe, with Talon just lacking aggression over this series. I mean, I'm not sure. They're not really setting themselves up well with their draft straight away. Like, I think Fear kept talking about how much he wanted to see KP just playing a team fighter hero and just really make their game plan easy to execute. Instead, they're stealing strats in game two, and then instead of them taking Roche at 13 minutes the way Fnatic did, Fnatic are taking the Roche at 15 minutes instead. It's like, this is not going well for you. Mm -hmm. uh, it's execution, it's hard. Like, this is a hard lineup to pull off. Um, Obviously, like, credit where credit is due, they won their lanes. They did a really good job there in the early game. Like, I, it looked bad for Fnatic for f the first 15 minutes. Um, they lost that fight we saw. You know, KP's Death Prophet destroyed Raven in lane. Like, TA really struggles to play into the, uh, into her because of the fact that the refraction get uh, char charges get eaten up by the Siphon, right? So it's a great lane. They're doing great. Uh, but, like, they recover really well in Fnatic. Like, they bring Marcy mid, um, kill Lina, like, twice with the, the rebound toss back. So, like, I don't know. I think Fnatic just played off the fact they were losing really well. Their, com their comeback was very clean. <laughs> yeah, what do you feel then fear enabled them the most for a comeback? Was it the maps? Was it just this draft? How, I mean, I guess how they were moving, right, as a team playing together? Like, comeback is and just playing from that oh. Yeah, from that lane, right? Like, oh, they were down, see. coming out of lanes, but they didn't really let Talon snowball with it. Oh, uh, I think Undying was a big factor. Like, it was really hard for them to fight into the tombstone mm -hmm. so they just kind of played patiently and they played on the Roche if she mentioned it they are playing Radiant both games both games they drafted very heavy for building push and doing Roche had like the Undying the Enigma in the previous game they were the ones that had the Shaman plus what was it DP right so they they drafted with clear purposes to do objectives and 
It was very clean, both games. Mm -hmm. It definitely was. And uh, it does mean that we're also going to get a winner's interview with Fnatic. We're going to be joined by none other than Raven himself. Ooh. Raven, thank you for joining us. Congratulations on the win. How does it feel to take 2-0 over Talon? I think it feels great right now because we're the one who doesn't have a loss. So it feels good. Yeah, you guys are now the only undefeated team in Division 1. I want to know, though, what is the biggest focus for you guys over the past week? Because you looked fantastic today on Fnatic. I think our discipline right now is very good. Like, uh, we don't die so much. And I know the, the leaning is a bit rough right now, but I think we can... Our discipline is really much better right now. Mm -hmm. what, what have you changed exactly <laughs> to improve that discipline? <laughs> Uh, I think we just like simple things. We really get angry about it already because we're, we're almost to TI. So even the smallest things, you know, we're trying to improve. That's okay. why even it's, it's very good. It's great to see. Sure. So I have a question for you. You picked yeah. Templar Assassin in the last game. Did you know you're landing versus a Death Prophet, or what was your reason for picking uh, TA in that game? I I know I'm gonna lose my lane, but I think it's very good in the game. It's just a uh, rush potential. So that's what I'm thinking that, you know, even I lose the lane, I think we can still come back and uh, gonna do better. Playing the long game, I see. In fairness. Yeah. Uh, I'm just curious, looking back on like the Stockholm Major, what was your like favorite part of that event as a team? Stockholm Major? Yeah. I think my favorite part is uh, versus OG, even though that our loss is kind of bad, but you know, we feel good that we can toe to toe to the Europe teams. And I think that's my, uh, you know, memorable part. <laughs> it's great to hear. Raven, congratulations again on the win. And thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. See ya. Thanks. Weave it out, oh, boys. Oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah. oh, fanatic. There, you know, <laughs> closing it out in two. Oh, we've only had uh, two other duo series in SEA. So big congratulations to them, a team that seems like they're on the path to being quite unstoppable, always improving, always working on those small things as we heard there in that interview. These Division One standings are a pure reflection of that. Fnatic now being the only undefeated team, sitting up there pretty in number one. Talon picking up their first series loss. And then we have RSG, T1, Boom, SMG, and GXC, and Polaris all the way down there. On the bottom, is there anything you guys want to say some closing thoughts about SEA before we jump over to another region? I was just going to say, what else Fnatic is always doing? Making it to the major. <laughs> <laughs> Classic. They're going to look good. Yeah, I'm mm hype. -hmm. I mean, I just want to see them like do better and better because they are like a very likable team. They yeah, play very charismatic. fun. Yeah, they have great fun drafts. Like, I, you you want to root for Fnatic. Yeah. So let's mm -hmm. hope they get to the major and they get even further than last time. Mm -hmm. We're definitely rooting for Fnatic and uh, the rest of the SEA DPC, which uh, has concluded for today. But you guys don't have to go anywhere because we are going to be flipping <gasps> over to no way. Eastern Europe. I know Holy. we're going to be having some Eastern European Division 1 action coming up after this break.